does anybody else feel like technology is moving at the craziest pace? Every single year there's some crazy new cell phone or crazy new computer. I just feel like I can't keep up with every single update and app and all of these things that continue to happen. But what about some of those vintage technology pieces? Some of those things that have completely been left behind by time that we seem to think are obsolete and sometimes not really worth anything. Some of these things can still be really valuable. So today I'm going to share with you guys some of the coolest vintage technology finds and I'm going to tell you guys what some of these things can actually still sell for and I think you're going to be surprised. So one of the very first things that I'm going to show you guys is this Apple eMate 300. What a lot of people don't know is before Apple was making tablets and iPads, Apple actually created what was called a handheld personal assistant and you have the little pin and you could write on it and they had a bunch of other features as well and these all had an operating system called Newton. Now what's really cool about this Apple eMate 300, this was one of the only computers with a keyboard that ran on the Newton software. It actually came with a little stylus pen and it could read your handwriting on the screen which was also really cool. But these were released by Apple in 1997 and they would have costed anywhere from $700 to $800 which even then was a lot of money back in the day for a laptop like this. And you can actually still sell these today anywhere from $100 to $130. And what I love about vintage Apple stuff is they made everything with like this little handle on it. Pretty much, actually, there were a lot of laptop companies back in the day, like when they first started coming out, they wanted you just to be able to carry it like a briefcase. It's got this really cool look to it, and then it opens up, and then it has the stylus, which was like groundbreaking technology back in the day, and you could write on it, and it would read your handwriting, which was like, mind-blowing, totally fits with the Apple super futuristic aesthetic that they were going for back in the 90s. And if you're familiar with Apple, you might have heard of a little thing called the iPhone. Apple wasn't the first company to try to do a smartphone. They just looked really, really, really different back in the 1960s and 70s. Exhibit A. This is from a company called Quasar. They had a whole collection of vintage televisions and vintage radios and vintage phones. But what's really cool is they were one of the very first companies to try to like cram everything together into a single device. When you think of your smartphone now, you use it as your alarm in the morning, you use it as your clock, you use it to call people, you use it to watch TV shows. You have your radio here, you could set your alarm. You have your snooze button. It's got the antenna here so you'd get really good service on your TV if you wanted to watch one of your favorite shows. And then if you wanted to make a phone call, you just pick this up. I absolutely love this thing. I'm totally obsessed with the idea that somebody had already tried to make an Apple iPhone. It's just a little bit bigger. They were just way ahead of their time. Way ahead of their time. Way, way, way ahead of their time. Now when we think of vintage technology, we immediately think of the 1980s. And when I think of the 1980s, I think of punk rock bands and crazy electric guitars. So I go to the flea market and on the ground they had these like super stylized 1980s electric guitars, but I noticed that one of them says Gibson. You guys, Gibson is one of the most collectible guitar manufacturers that you are ever going to find. Gibson has literally been around since the early 1900s and they're still making some of the best quality guitars from acoustic to electric but this particular one here is an electric guitar that they released in 1983. I had to get this because they only wanted $20 for it. This particular model was not super popular however. In fact this one was nicknamed the can opener guitar because it's shaped like a can opener. Like the paint's kind of coming off. Uh, but you can see here it says Gibson. Anytime you can find a Gibson guitar for $20, like, don't ask questions. Just pick it up, give them the $20, and leave as quickly as possible. I don't think it's supposed to sound like that when you shake a guitar. I think I fixed it. I think I'm a guitar repairman now. I fixed this guitar! I'm a Gibson guitar repairman. Please send me your guitars. I will fix them. They will be as good as new by the time I'm done with them. Very pleased with my work on this piece. It's not electric guitars and laptops. What about those old desktop computers? Some of those can be worth a lot of money. And in fact, even if you don't find the whole computer, some of the computer parts can be worth a lot of money. They're not making them anymore. And a lot of people really, really like the quality of these things. So the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is this box. Let's just open it up and see what's inside, shall we? Who's gonna want this to 
disgusting, dirty, old computer keyboard. You guys, the reality is these old IBM keyboards are incredibly valuable. People will buy these to replace their old ones all the time, and they're not making these anymore. This particular one is amazing because it comes in the original box. Even though it's a little bit dirty, I can easily clean this off. This is what's called a clicky keyboard or a mechanical keyboard. People love to listen to themselves type. And I just like picture some woman in like really big 80s hair and like big glasses chewing gum at a bank, typing heavily, phones ringing in the background. Phones, like phones that you'd pick up and you could rest here to talk on. I'm, I'm, I'm talking phone phones. And then you have to really ask yourself, where did the 80s woman from the bank get all of the gum that she chewed all day because we all know that those 80s women with the big hair working at banks chewed gum all day and we're not talking like one piece it was like four pieces maybe even five i'm not actually sure how accurate that is but i also imagine that the only place that they could get this gum would be these amazing vintage gumball machines so the next thing i'm going to show you guys is this really cool gumball machine now this particular piece is actually not even from the 80s this is probably from the 1990s 90s, but I don't know if you guys remember like when Space Jam and Michael Jordan all of these things were really really big in the early 90s And this is actually really cool It would have been used by like a diner or a restaurant You could put it on the table at the restaurant and then here It's got like a section where you can put your um, salt and pepper shakers And then whoever was sitting at the table could put a quarter in here and like try to shoot it and then you'd get gum or candy or whatever was inside. Now, one piece of technology that we haven't talked about yet are old video games. You guys, old video games were all the rage in the 80s and 90s. You had the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis and you had all of these different manufacturers that were racing to create the best system and the best gaming experience for your customer. There were so many different consoles being developed by so many different companies that it actually led to this crazy video game crash in the 1980s. This only lasted for a few years, but it was enough to knock a lot of these businesses completely out of the race. And this next thing that I'm gonna show you guys is one such business that wasn't so lucky. This particular console is from a company called Coleco, and what's really interesting about them is they actually opened their business in the 1930s as a leather company, but then they started making toys in the 1980s. Now, you actually might know Coleco because they were the manufacturers of Cabbage Patch Kid dolls. That's sort of their claim to fame, but they also jumped into the race to develop one of the coolest video game consoles. And what this guy has is an entire collection of different consoles and extensions that were offered for this console called ColecoVision. This is actually a really cool set. These are also in really, really good condition. Now, this particular console is not incredibly valuable. If you can find one in the original box or if you can put together a good collection like this, you can get a couple hundred dollars for it. This company actually ended up going out of business in the 1980s directly after this crash. They just weren't weren't able to weather the storm, unfortunately. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is also really cool. This is from a company called NEC. They're still making stuff till this very day and they have been around for a very, very long time. They released these personal computers in the 80s and the 90s and they have a really strong cult following. Like there's a lot of people that really, really like these vintage computers. And I found one at the flea market and they only wanted $20 for it. So I was like, you know, if it works, this is actually pretty good. And I plugged it in, it actually did work, so I was very excited about that. And these things go anywhere from $100 to $200. And what's really cool about this is again, got my signature vintage technology handle. Now I can go anywhere and do anything. And then you push this up like that. And now you're ready for a long day at work. Chewing your gum with your big glasses and your big hair. Answering your phone and putting it on your shoulder. I think I've watched too many 80s movies. I think that's actually what the problem is. We all know that like robots were this really cool idea in the 1980s. We really thought like by the year 2020, things would be very different. Like I think we have like cool phones and stuff, but let's be real. None of us are like flying around in jet propelled cars and nobody's like living in cities in the sky. So to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed. Cool, this is from a company called Toy Max and Toy Max created this really incredible line of robots that was remote control 
control operated. So you could drive this thing around. It had arms that would extend and pick things up. And then it also had a little tray in the front. So you could just set whatever you picked up on this tray. It was actually a really cool idea. And they made a few variations of these. And if you can find these in really good condition and they have all of the parts, like you need to have the remote control to operate this. And this particular one just doesn't have it. So I'm not even gonna ask for the price on this, but I definitely wanted to show this to you guys because if you can find one in really good condition that has all of the parts, these things can go for quite a bit of money. And this isn't even super old. This is only from 1998, but it still has a really great vintage look to it. Calculators are a really, really easy thing to use. In fact, you just pull them out of a drawer. They always just kind of work. So you can pull a calculator out of a drawer that you've had for 10 years and it's just, it's always gonna work. That's just sort of this weird rule that we've all taken for granted our whole lives. This calculator here is so dramatic and so over the top. And I bought it because it came in the original box, you guys. And this would have been from the 1970s. And this is from a company called Texas Instruments. And they are definitely no stranger to creating really dramatic over the top calculators. But this particular calculator is just your basic calculator. And look at how many things come with this basic calculator. Like this is crazy. It has a whole owner's manual. Then it has an AC adapter so that you can plug it in. And they're not necessarily that valuable unless you can find them in really good condition and in the original box like this. And they only wanted $5 for this. How cool is this? This calculator from the 1970s that you plugged in to the wall. They give you this. You needed a carry case for your plug into the wall calculator. I don't even want to know how much something like this went for brand new because It'll probably make me upset. I actually get a little mad now when I'm walking through Best Buy and I see a calculator that's like $350 and I'm just like, what? it's called Google. Like just type in whatever you need to figure out. You don't even need those anymore. These people are out of their minds. Texas instrument calculator with a giant box that I could live in if I needed to. So because it totally fits with the theme of this video, I'm gonna give a shout out to Kim in my Facebook group. You guys, look at what Kim found at Goodwill. And this is $4.99, but can I just tell you guys something? This is a Leica M6 camera, which is mind blowing. Like if she found this for $500, it would, I would have bought it. If she found this for $800, I would have bought this. If she found this for $1,000, I still would have even considered it because these cameras can go anywhere from two to $3,000 and she got it for $4.99 at a Goodwill. You guys, I never wanna hear another comment telling me that your Goodwill just prices everything so high. That's insane, Kim, congratulations. That is like a crazy good find. I'm super excited for you. If you guys wanna check out Kim's find, you can go down to the Facebook group link and join it below and you can see all the things people are finding and posting. It's pretty incredible to see all the things you guys are finding. And uh, Kim, I'm gonna think about that every day for a couple of seconds until the day I die. So just know that. So I wanna hear from you guys, what is one piece of technology, vintage or maybe even not so vintage, that we don't really use anymore? Something that's just completely obsolete that you would love to bring back into today's world. For me, I feel like I would love the old telephones when you were upset and you wanted to be mad and you really wanted it to be known that you were mad, so you slammed the phone down, like that's, what I feel like I'm missing in my life. It just doesn't have the same effect when you're angry and you like, Ugh! I feel like the person on the other side knows when you slam the phone. I don't know, I don't have a lot of angry phone calls, but I like the option. I'd like to have that option available to me. That's what I would want back, and I can't wait to hear what you guys would want. Leave your comment in the comment section below. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do it now so you don't miss future episodes. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.